That's the other one. So snap the lips. Ooh, but it's mm -hmm. dropping mm -hmm. down. Okay, we're looking at the corkscrew punch. Uh, there's, there's a few factors that have to come into play. One is the drop. The other one is snapping the hips. Now, there has to be this slight delay between your snap of the hip and the actual delivery of the punch. You're thinking about at the end of the chain whip type thing. So if there's a ball on the end of the chain, that ball on the end doesn't move at the same time as the initiator of the, the movement for the sine wave snapping out. So we wanna make sure that as we're doing this, we're rotating with a slight delay. So this doesn't come into play until that comes in. Now there's a couple of different ways. One is we're doing it straight like this. Both of them come up with the shoulder raised. This rotation helps make that happen. So the corkscrew is not only just in a slight arc downward with a drop. We're going towards the jawline, but we're training a little bit on here. We have to combine that with the drop of our hip downward and the snap that transfers out to the end of the fist. Now, one is that straight line shot. The other is I'm doing it on a movement, adding momentum in a diagonal forward uh, position. So in here, you just relax and you send it down. So there's gotta be that little disconnect between your snap and the delivery of the punch. And then you just have to make sure you're rotating it over because you want to take it with the mentality of driving your top two knuckles down in. This is a shot that comes down across this part. You think about the clavicle shot, that sort of thing, but inset uh, along the jawline path towards the spine. It can hit on the face, face moves, head moves a little bit more, so we go a little bit below. And relax through it. If you're tense at all, you're trying to snap your hips at the same time as running this, you won't get the full relaxed delivery on that strike. That's a requirement of it.